Hi there guys, Phil Short here. Welcome to another one of my online YouTube guitar lessons. Today I want to show you a couple of quick tips on how you can spice up your blues playing and in particular we're going to draw our inspiration from the mighty Scott Henderson and check out a few devices that he likes to use. Okay, the first one is checking out the Lydian dominant tonality. Now that sounds like a very kind of a expensive sounding scale or you know a scary title to it. It's really not that scary at all. You already probably know in fact all of the notes in it apart from one and we can drop this in really nicely into our blues and kind of pentatonic phrasing that we've already got established which is fantastic. So let's have a look at the scale. We can view the scale in a number of ways, but one of the ways that I find easiest to see it as is a mixolydian scale, but with a sharpened fourth. So this would be our standard A mixolydian scale that we'd use for playing over dominant chords or playing in kind of blues-ish orientated styles of music. <laughs> And that fits really nicely in all of your blues and minor pentatonic vocabulary. And whenever you do all of that sort of minor third to a major third bend, and you add in that major six, all that really good stuff, you're implying the sound of the Mixolydian scale. So let's have a look at the Lydian dominant sound then. All we need to do is change the perfect fourth to the sharpened fourth. So we've got a root, a major second, a major third, and normally we'd play fret five and play the perfect fourth, but we're gonna go up a semitone and raise it, and it'll now become a sharpened fourth. And then we'll land on the perfect fifth, major six, flat seven, and then back on the octave. And now we've got this kind of really cool, spicy, dominant kind of flavor that just uh, brings a little bit more tension. That's now our pattern for the Lydian dominant scale. And as you can see, fits really nicely inside that mix of Lydian shape and our blues pentatonic phrasing. So we can start to mix some of those different ideas together. So we could play a stock blues phrase. bring in some of that Lydian dominant flavor just to break things up. Now a really important thing to note, whenever you're using these kind of tensions and, and sounds, we want to diffuse that tension by going back to stock pentatonic vocabulary. If I stay in that sound for too long, it can become tiresome very quickly and uh, the impact that that sound brings gets lost and it's no longer an exciting bit of interest or contrast in the lines that we're playing. So really important that we don't end up just only using that sound when we play over these kinds of chords. We want it to be part of a broad range of colors that we can apply to our improvising and, and to uh, any part writing that you might be doing. And what I wanna do is just show you a couple of ways that uh, we can really get that sound to pop. Now, first thing to notice is that sharpened fourth could also be seen as a flattened fifth as well. Now the reason why I say that is because we would already use that note when playing our blues scale, which I'm sure all of us watching this video will have come across before at some stage. Now when we play that pentatonic scale and we add in that flattened fifth or that sharpened fourth, you can hear it has a very different sound to that Lydian dominant flavor that we're discussing. And the reason for that is because it's to do with how you approach that sharpened fourth interval or that flattened fifth interval. In the Lydian dominant context, it is a sharpened four because we've replaced the natural four. And the reason why it has its specific sound that it does is because we have a tone jump from the previous note into that note, which has a very tense sound to it. Okay, so if I do this, that has a much, much more aggressive is the wrong word, but it's got a more stark sound to it. It's, uh, you know, it just pops out more. If I play, it just sounds like a chromatic run. That natural four in the middle kind of diffuses uh, the sound of the tension that is, is going to appear. So it's, you know, it's less in your face. So when I'm playing the phrases, it's very important that I actually jump to that sharp four interval from the major third in particular or resolve down to the major third and miss out that natural four. Same on the G string here. You know, even if I play uh, minor pentatonic phrases, 
it's going from that flat five or sharp four and landing on the major third in particular that brings out the quality of that sound. If I end up doing this, it no longer sounds like Lydian dominant to my ear anymore. Now it just sounds like I'm playing blues vocabulary and chucking that flat five in. Now, the other thing that I want to show you guys is a couple of different ways that we can approach building some lines that will stop us from sounding like we're just running the scale up and down. And in particular, I want to show you how we can use some arpeggios to do this. Now, I'm probably going to do a much more in-depth video uh, on all of the different possibilities because uh, this is a really cool concept. But for now, I'm just going to show you one of these concepts, which is superimposing the minor seven flat five arpeggio. What we're going to do is play a minor seven flat five arpeggio off the sharp four degree of the chord, and that's going to bring out all of the qualities of this Lydian dominant sound. Okay, so this is what our half diminished, it's also known as, this is what our minor seven flat five arpeggio is going to look like. Now you can see that that arpeggio crosses over really nicely with your Mixolydian and kind of blues vocabulary stuff. So if we want to bring out and emphasize that Lydian dominant sound, we can drop in that half diminished arpeggio. And diffuse that tension with regular blues stock kind of phrasing and all that kind of stuff. We could also look at adding in some chromatic notes. And bring it back into minor pentatonic. So now you can hear we're kind of getting into much more of that kind of fusion style of um, creating lines and kind of fusion vocabulary with chromatic notes and um, approach notes and all of that kind of stuff. So by using that as a framework, a skeleton framework to draw out that sound, it helps me sound um, a little bit less like I'm just um, practicing the scale up and down uh, and lets me be a little bit more creative with um, kind of the jumps and twists and turns in the sound. So it's a really, really useful little method that you can use. And then you could find all of those uh, different uh, minus seven flat five arpeggios across the whole fretboard, look for all the sharp fours from the A's and see if you can play them across the entire neck. And then you could drop that into all of like your uh, five positions of minor pentatonic, for example. So you can still use that as your, uh, as your main kind of framework. There's a couple of quick tips. I hope you guys uh, get a lot out of those and enjoy them. My name is Phil Short. You can check me out on Instagram, Phil Short Guitarist, and Facebook, Phil Short Guitarist. Please hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, and I look forward to sharing more tips with you next time. Take care.